A racist Karen thinks that she can order a Marine around, threatens the Marine, and then throws a glass at the Marine. This does not go over well and backfires brutally. Here's what happened. Subscribe to Am I the Jerk on YouTube and hit the bell to turn on notifications. I was working Toys for Tots in the DC area, which is a program the Marine Corps runs every year to gather toys and gifts and distribute them to kids whose Christmas tree would likely disappoint Charlie Brown. Sexist or not, they seem to pick those of us who have the quote marine look in the casting sense tall slash masculine or on the lady side that particular blend of I'll kick your butt with one hand while doing my eyeliner with the other hand it's as much marketing as anything especially in the DMV point being we're a bunch of tall very fit ukes out there in dress blues smiling and coaxing toys out of people who could have probably saved Toys R Us with petty stock earnings we look nothing like wait staff I myself am six foot one 210 pounds and another SNCO who's 5'4", probably 135 pounds, were assigned to an event at the Smithsonian. Somehow, the Corps had managed to get a display in a few donation bins put up at a black tie invitation-only shindig surrounding the display of the Hope Diamond and a bunch of other large hunks of carbon. Personally, I don't understand the obsession with it. It's a large, shiny rock. No one is wearing it. It serves no scientific purpose. It just sits there so you can look at it or something. I feel more satisfied faction looking at an exceptionally big turd the night after Taco Tuesday. At least I made it myself, often with significant effort and no small amount of regret slash self-loathing to provide fuel for the push. Anyway, we're smiling our pearly whites while the various movers and doers shake our hands, toys on display, posing for the cameras so their constituents slash stockholders, etc. can see how kind-hearted they are. The sick thing is how many don't even donate. They just get a photo in front of the pile of toys sans the generosity pretty much par for the course. The initial wave of donations passes as the event gets down to business. Drinks are passed out and they start in with the hors d'oeuvres and we're standing there surreptitiously munching and trying not to get those godforsaken white gloves dirty. When this lady, who's best described as a chubby mixed race female Steve Buscemi, comes toddling up in a dress waistcoat thing that looked like it was screaming for mercy from the button fairy. Fat Steve Buscemi Karen said, Hey! You two, I'm dry here. Let's get snappy with a refill. Something like that. We didn't realize she was talking to us, so I only paid half attention. Fat Steve Buscemi Karen, after a second of us not replying, said, Hey, I know you hear me. Get your butts in gear. Flirting time is over. At this point, we realize she meant us. I look over at Pocket, my fellow Marine's nickname. We call her P. She looks at me. We look at the lady. It took a second, okay? So finally, I speak and say, Can I? I help you, ma'am? Well, it's about time. I need a refill, and while you're at it, get me some of those little munchy things. They stopped bringing them out a few minutes ago. You guys should rip. Pocket cut her off to say, ma'am, I'm sorry, but we don't work here. We're just here with the toys for- I don't give a dang about what you think. Get your butt in gear or I'll have your job. I will not be talked to by someone like you. Fat Steve Buscemi Karen proceeds to toss her empty ish glass at Pocket, who gets some leftover drips on her blues but catches it out of reflex. I can see the thunderclouds gathering. A stain like that likely means she's looking at a new blues coat, which runs a few hundred dollars. Probably a new ribbon setup too. Pocket is Puerto Rican and has the temper to match, so I try to head the lady off. Ma'am, we're not wait staff. we're just... Fat Steve Buscemi Karen interrupts and says... <laughs> Do you know who my husband is? Fat Steve Buscemi Karen proceeded to put her finger right under my nose and continue the tirade. Apparently, Hubby was a Southern Senator's main booster slash campaign funder. So said Google and would see to it that I'd quote, be sleeping under newspaper. After about 10 seconds of this, we're starting to draw stairs and some of the staff were starting to head our way. However much I wanted to put this B in a compliance hold, I could pretty well visualize visualize the CNN article if a male Marine laid hands on a woman in front of all those people, especially a politically connected one. I was sort of at a loss. Fortunately for me, I didn't have to make that choice. Pocket made it for me. Ma'am, you need to calm down. Please take your glass and... She held out Fat Steve Buscemi Karen's glass to her as she said this. Fat Steve Buscemi Karen switches her wrath from me to Pocket and slaps the glass out of 
of Pocket's hand. I could see Pocket's control wavering, but there wasn't anything for it. Fat Steve Buscemi Karen bored right in. The critical mistake was to start jabbing Pocket with her finger right in the chest with each word she said. You shut your... Insert racist word here. No! I cringed visibly at that second to last word because yeah, I knew exactly what was about to happen and it did. It's called the Udegatame in Judo, basically a standing arm lock and Pocket was a two tab black belt. Pocket snatched her arm up, locked her out and slammed her face straight into the wall next to us. Blood, broken nose, drywall dust, the whole bit. Just that grin teeth smile that says, I'm gonna mess you up so hard that your grandkids will be born with my handprint on their soul. It was awesome and a little hot to be honest. I, being both the senior marine and somewhat cooler of temperament, carefully pull P back. I dare say it was akin to handling a small but very dangerous animal. Fat Steve Buscemi Karen kind of slides to the floor, actually much quieter now that she's trying to aspirate a mixture of blood and gypsum. Security finally showed up to help, which resulted in them hauling Fat Steve Steve Buscemi Karen away and taking us to a separate room where we gave our version of things. Security recordings were reviewed, of which there were many, what with the fancy rocks everywhere and so on. Pocket wanted to press assault charges, but oddly enough, no DC police became involved. I'm assuming that politics were at play there. I called the head shed to let them know what happened. They sent a van to pick us slash the toys up. Funny enough, it never seemed to make it to the news. I think that, more than anything, saved Pocket's butt. Upon coming Coming back to the main event area to load the toys and take down the display, we were given a wide berth by many of the upper crusties. I feel compelled to mention the notable exception. This one old lady who came up and asked if she could give Pocket a hug of all things. Just kind of gave her that grandma style hug, patted her on the back and took her hands and said, You know, in my younger years, I would have stomped that whale flat. Wonderfully done, dear. And then she wandered off to rejoin the party. It was adorable. So, how should should we have handled the situation? Were we the jerks for taking it too far? I can't believe this lady threw a glass at Pocket. I mean, I could have easily shattered and gotten in someone's eye or just cut someone. And maybe because of the power that this lady is in, because of who her husband is and where she usually is at, she's just so used to seeing everyone else there as just wait staff that she can treat like trash and order around to the point that she doesn't even realize that these are Marines. I figured both the Marines here could very easily defend themselves against this Karen, but the fact that Pocket Pocket is a black belt in judo makes this even more wild. The top response to this was, surprise, pocket sand, which is probably one of the best responses to a story ever. At the end of the day though, this Karen didn't end up getting in trouble at all. So clearly the power that her husband had was real to some degree. Otherwise, Pocket would have had the chance to press assault charges like she wanted to. But let me know how you guys see the situation down below. Do you think the response was justified or was it going too far and jerk or not a jerk and why? Before we jump into the next one, if you like Am I the jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Am I the jerk for grounding my daughter for calling out how my girlfriend talks to waiters? I'm 47 years old and I recently began dating a woman who's 33 about a month ago and this week I arranged for her to meet my daughter who's 12. We were going to a restaurant for lunch. My girlfriend does not particularly like interacting with waiters or waitresses, especially those at more casual dining places. She's had bad experiences with them and feels like they often judge her and other customers on her slash their food choices. She's also sensitive to entitled attitudes on their part. So whenever she goes out with friends or with me, she prefers that someone else places her order for her and she does the rest of the interactions with the waitstaff, like handing them the paid bill, asking for utensils slash refills, etc. So when it comes time to order and the waitress is asking my girlfriend what she wants, my girlfriend looks directly at me and I order for her. My girlfriend wants another fork in the middle of our meal and she asks, asks me to ask the waiter for it. This triggers my daughter because the waitress happens to be within earshot and my daughter starts asking my girlfriend why she refuses to acknowledge waitstaff. I tell my daughter to be polite, but she continues on and says that when the busboy came, she could have at least thanked him for taking her soup dish away. She then says, they're all human beings. And it came out louder than we all expected and the diners nearby stared at us. We end up cutting our meal short because my girlfriend was obviously a 
offended and I drive home with my daughter. I told her that this was no way to treat a woman who I love and who I want to be a part of our lives. I end up grounding her for embarrassing my girlfriend in front of everybody. Am I the jerk? My daughter has grown up and needs to learn that not everybody approaches situations how she does and that it's ignorant to just write them off as rude or even worse to raise an issue with them about it. Also, I have to add that she claimed my girlfriend is so rude and idolizes her late mother who would regularly tip 30%. Yet she is the one who raised her voice in public. So am I the jerk for grounding my daughter for calling out how my girlfriend talks to waiters? I mean, it does sound like your girlfriend is being rude to the waitstaff even from how you're describing it. And if I had to choose if there was a positive or negative spin on how this was being described, I would assume it's a positive spin because the OP here thinks that him and his girlfriend are in the right. So in other words, there's a chance that this behavior is even worse than is being described here. To the 12 year old daughter, she probably perceives this as being sort of dehumanizing to the waitstaff, even though the girlfriend and the OP probably don't see it like that at all. They see it as her reaction to a series of bad experiences in the past. So let me know how you see the situation down below, jerk or not a jerk and why. A Karen thinks that I'm a lowly worker at the nursing home and when I don't answer the phone for the place I don't even work at, she reaches out and snatches my arm while I'm in the process of moving holding a heavy box and it doesn't go the way she thinks it's going to go. Here's what happened. So over the last few days, my mother and I have been moving my grandmother into a nursing home. It's been incredibly difficult, not only for my grandma as this is a massive adjustment for her, but because at the best of times, she and my mother have had a strained relationship. This led to me doing the majority of the heavy lifting, taking boxes from the moving truck up the elevator, down the hall to my grandma's apartment, and then flattening the boxes and garbage back down just to get away from them for a few minutes at a time. On this particular trip, I was taking some old dishes that simply couldn't fit in the limited kitchenette, mostly metal cups and wooden bowls with a few broken dishes chucked in the bottom, all marked for the garbage. So I'm walking down the hall with a huge box in my arms and off to my left, I can hear a phone ringing. As I get closer, I can see a woman, definitely not old enough to be a resident, peering around to see what the sound is coming from. As I approach, she asks me rather snottily, are you going to answer that? I raise one eyebrow and give her a rather confused look. I'm clearly dressed nothing like the staff who all wear scrubs, but friends, after three days packing and unpacking in the sweltering apartment, I didn't have much patience left. She was frowning at me so hard I had to say something. So as I walked by, I said, sure lady, I'll get right on that and carried on to the elevator. Karen whirls around on me with a how dare you expression on her face and grabs my arm while breathing in, probably to tell me at maximum volume what a bad employee I am. I have already had enough of this woman's entitlement. I drop the box. The broken dishes inside shatter again. Karen is startled so badly she shuts up and takes a step back. I look at her evenly. It cannot be lost on her that I am angry and clearly on the edge of something. I didn't yell, but in a low, clipped voice, I say, never breaking eye contact, I don't effing work here. I am not going to answer the phone because it isn't my problem. Now leave me alone. Her head was, by this point, as far back on her neck as possible. Her lips sucked in. I maintain eye contact as the elevator dings and the door rolls open. I half push, half kick the box into the elevator and let the doors close behind me. So was I the jerk? This one is more of a snapshot in time than an entire story. It's just one man on the brink of losing it after being frustrated throughout this whole process. Dropping the box was a nice little touch since it probably seemed a lot more dramatic than it actually was because there were already a few broken dishes at the bottom of it. And obviously it didn't matter if anything broke because it was all marked for the garbage. So in a way he kind of won this interaction by by acting crazier than she could act because who in their right mind would just drop an entire box of dishes at least because that's how the Karen probably perceives the situation but let me know how you see the situation down below and jerk or not a jerk and why my best friend was cheated on by his wife and he is devastated so I took it upon myself to get revenge on his cheating ex here's what happened this one needs background to fully understand why I went out of my way for this revenge my best friend was married for 10 years with his ex for a total of 13 
14 years. He was absolutely head over heels in love with her like I had never seen before, which I never understood due to her lush addiction to drink. She would take it out on him and when he'd be venting about it, he'd always fall back on, it's not her, it's the illness. A very respectable and admirable stance on it. Last year, she asked for a divorce because after years of him just taking it, he had simply run out of gas. Her reasoning for asking for one? When she got fired for testing positive for herb, he wasn't sympathetic enough. He admits that he wasn't because it had come on the back of one of her sloshed tirades where she told him that he was a piece of trash who was always trying to control her when all he ever did was to try to get her away from drinking because of the way that she treated him when she was sloshed. It took him forever to move on from this with a divorce following shortly after and earlier this year after thinking he was moving on he calls me to come over and he's in a bad way. I arrive and he is absolutely fall down level of sloshed going on that she didn't ask for a divorce for those reasons that she had really been cheating with several other people. The next morning when he's more coherent, I asked him how he knew. He was cleaning out the spare room and selling slash donating stuff he didn't need anymore and when he went on to clear an old tablet, she was still logged on and all the evidence was there. He gets that out and says that he's going back to bed and asked me to lock up when I leave. Before I left, I looked at the tablet. After seeing what I saw, I wanted to find a way to get even with the horrible and conniving woman. So I took pictures of it all and left. When I got home, I started looking up information about these people. Two of them were just normal guys. Whether they knew that she was married or not, I don't know. But the third, well, the third comes up as a registered S offender. Still on probation for being such a disgusting pile of trash and listed as 123 City Lane. This guy knew that she was married. I immediately knew what I was going to do. Chromo was his name and Chromo didn't live at 123 Lane. Chromo was living with the conniving ex. She made regular posts about their time together and on top of that, she is an avid herb user and has several gats because she enjoys sports shooting. So I go into the state's offender site and make a report of Chromo not actually living where he's registered and that Chromo is living in a home with what he has no right to be, being a convicted felon and on parole. I include screenshots of the social media posts to back it all up. I was thinking little would happen other than an inconvenience to their lives. Boy was I wrong. She broke her typical posts with nothing serious trends on social media yesterday with this gem. My year can't get get any worse. Chromo lost his job and I am now facing eviction because I can't afford my rent. So I go on to the state court system to see if it's related and yes, it was. Chromo was re-arrested. She clearly can't post bail or Chromo would be out. The job she took after being fired definitely can't support her lifestyle so he's probably going to go back to prison or at least jail and she's a breath away from being homeless. I don't know if I'd ever tell my best friend that I'm the one behind this but he is definitely ecstatic to know that this horrible woman and sewer rat get what they deserve. Part of me wants to put up the offender registration link and that it's sitting in jail and say something to the effect of, it's a little more than losing a job, but not wanting to make my best friend's life harder, I'll just let sleeping dogs lie. So, am I the jerk? This is a dynamic you almost never see, a best friend getting revenge for their best friend's spouse cheating on them. For some reason, this happens a whole lot less often than one might think. And usually it's because people don't want to get involved in somebody else's situation no matter how close they are to that person. So it is a little surprising that the OP here took this upon themselves to go out and do all of this and really not even directly target it at the cheating ex, but at the cheating ex's partner. And obviously indirectly this did affect the cheating ex because she can't afford her rent anymore, but the other guy is directly back in jail because of this. Somebody responded with an interesting point to this saying, if you tell him, he may wind up feeling sympathetic toward her and taking her back. Don't give him the reason to feel guilt. To him, this was just karma catching up to her and confirmation that she deserves to stay in his past. So let me know if you agree with that sentiment down below and jerk or not a jerk and why. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories linked to the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Jerk, give Am I the Genius a shot, also linked in the description. Either way, thanks a lot for listening. We'll see you guys next time.